My brothers and sisters in Christ, in today's first reading from the Acts of the Apostles, we hear the continued dispute between the Sanhedrin and the Apostles as they continue to preach the gospel and conduct the works of Jesus. The Sanhedrin want them to stop, and at this point they're willing to use force or to even kill them as they did Jesus. And yet they recognize that again the crowd is being worked into a fury. And so in steps this interesting character of Gamaliel today, who speaks actual words of great wisdom, words that are, are worthy of our discernment today. And his point is that not to overuse force and to try to not overly control this movement. So he says, if it is of human origin, it will fade out on its own. And he points to previous examples. After all, in the scriptures, there had been countless, especially in the, the period in the, the one to 200 years before the Gospels, in that late period of Judaism, there had been many people who had come and started movements, some that people thought were the Messiah, uh, various prophets that had people in a frenzy. And so there had been many previous movements, even revolts against the Romans, and yet each one of them flamed out or was suppressed violently and then scattered. And so Gamaliel brings up the point to them that if this Jesus movement is the same, then it will destroy itself. It may last a little while, but it'll flame out. But it is, if it is of God, then it won't end. God it will be the one backing it, supporting it, and those who fight them might even find themselves fighting against God. Gamaliel may not know how true his words were of opposing God through opposition of the apostles, but these words are also worthy of our discernment because nowadays, even within the church, we can get caught up with the idea constantly of movements, of new ideas, uh, of groups, of different things, the next best thing. And especially in this modern age, when we're we're caught up in the time of self-help and everyone has a rebranding new ideas of evangelization. And so there's a constant spurring of movements. And this isn't to say that all the thing these, these movements who are bad, many of them are powerful forces for good and in the church, but there must always be a certain uh, slow discernment and hesitancy anytime when we're dealing with movements. Because no matter how well intended, human movements will flame out. And we are not a people called to fads. We are a people called to the timeliness of the body of Christ. And so we see in the gospel passage today that Jesus, in one sense, this, this feeding of the, the multitudes is an embodiment of a movement. They all gather to hear him preach and teach. This is what the Jewish uh, authorities are seeing. And he gathers and he feeds them, and so he has this great following. And yet... In John chapter 6, he ultimately points to that it's not about the, the miracle itself of the loaves and the fishes, but he's pointing to the body of Christ himself, that he comes to feed his people, and they need to work for the bread that lasts forever. They need to be part of him. It's a Eucharistic sign. And so, we need to be reminded that the most powerful thing we can do is to grow deeper in our Eucharistic fidelity. The Eucharist absolutely incorporates us into the body of Christ. And so, this isn't just in the sense of receiving Holy Communion. Too many ways we've divorced this act from a true Eucharistic theology. But our participation in the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass, the offering we are joined to the one sacrifice of Christ the High Priest to his Father, when we are joined in that and turn fed by Jesus himself, we are incorporated into Christ and to one another. This is what the church is. This is her origin. This is her life force. This is, in one sense, the only movement we need because it is the movement of God, not a human movement. All of us join in the movement of God. Now, we have great ideas about how to do things done in God's name, but sometimes when we run around just trying to do great new ideas and human movements, we get interest for a time, we can do some good things, but it'll flame out because it's made of human hands. But the one thing that is enduring is the body of Christ. The church 
into which we are baptized, into which we have communion, and which God wants to lead us to eternal life. In this Easter season, may we not fight against God, may we not seek to execute our own ideas, plans, and visions, but in all things, may we yearn to that deeper fidelity, that deeper joining to the body of Christ. May God bless you all.